Welcome back to Armani's Math Lecture 6. This is the attractive unit circle. And I would like you to expand your horizon today by uh, uh, remembering things that uh, uh, about the unit circle that we've done and also um, being able to uh, uh, focus on at least the uh, warm-up for now. So that's going to uh, help us uh, move forward. So the first thing we're going to do is to convert radians to degrees. Uh, back to uh, last time, uh, I remember we've gone through something like this and 60 degrees to convert that to radians. Remember, you're trying to convert radians or pi radians, sometimes just called pi, sometimes uh, sometimes called just radians. Uh, and degrees is a little circle. So we said that you could do that by um, multiplying the 60 degrees by 180 at the bottom, 20 degrees, and then the pi. Uh, and then you're going to see if you can cancel. Uh, degrees are canceled. Change color here. Degrees are canceled. And uh, <clears throat> degrees canceled. And this zero also is canceled with the zero. The last zero on the right is canceled. Six divided by 18 gives you three. So uh, I've got myself uh, pi over 3. Pi over 3 is the answer for the first one. So I could go from degrees to pi radians. All right? Um, I also <coughs> wanted, <coughs> excuse me. Well, I also wanted us to look at a couple uh, ones. So we're going to do two more of these. And my desire is to do... Uh, uh, degrees okay let's do a couple more and this one is going to be uh i wanted us to do uh, uh 45 and 30. so i'm going to do the 45. <clears throat> how do you change 45 to uh pi radians if you know the answer go ahead and chime in in the chat but uh we said you're going to have to multiply this guy by uh, pi over 180. And we're going to follow the same process, pi over 180. And you're going to cancel out these uh, degrees. Uh, 45 over 180 is going to give you 1 over 4, or pi over 4, fourth of the pi, pi over 4. OK. Uh, last one I wanted us to try is also uh, perhaps down here. We're going to do uh, 30. How do I change 30 into, I see some chats here. How do I change 30 into uh, pi radians? 30. And I see a lot of answers here. Are you guys good? So I've got pi over 180. The degrees are going. The zeros are going to go. 3 over 18 is going to be 1 over 6, or pi over 6. All right? So that's what we've got when you um, do these kind of things. Okay? Now, how do I go backwards now? I need to change from uh, radians to degrees, and you do that by multiplying by the reciprocal, meaning you multiply by 180 divided by the pi because you want to get rid of the pi. So I'm going to take this uh, two-thirds of the pi and multiply it by, I'm going to do that by, pi has to be down here because I want to cancel top and bottom and leaving me with 180 down here, degrees. Okay, so let's go and start to chop things off. We've got the pi and the pi, and then I've got three, I've, I would really simplify before I multiply. So three and the one, uh, three here, and the 180. Uh, let's say 18 is divisible by three, which is going to give you a six. And then there's a zero. And then you have the two times that amount, which will give you uh, 120. Okay, 120 should be it. Uh, let's practice a little bit more. So what if I want to do? Uh, let's say we want to do, uh, I wanted us to do pi over three. 
How do I change that? How do I change from pi over 3 to degrees? Okay, pi over 3 to degrees. Well, you got to multiply again by uh, 180 degrees divided by the pi. Over here. And then this guy is going to go with this guy, leaving you with 180 divided by 3 or 18 divided by 3, which is... Uh, 18 divided by 3 is 6. Put that 0 back. You are talking about 60 degrees here. 60 degrees. Okay? Pi over 3 is 60. One third of the pi is 60. One third of the pi is 60. One more of this, and then we're going to uh, definitely keep going. One more of this, and let's say, for example, we wanted to convert, um, uh, let's say, pi over 2. <clears throat> I want to convert pi over 2. Pi over 2, I want to convert that to degrees. All right? Pi over 2. Pi over 2 times the same process. I've got uh, pi at the bottom, 180 at the top, degrees. Uh, the pi is going to cancel. Pi, pi, pi. Bye bye. And that's going to give you uh, the pi is going to go away, leaving you with 180 divided by 2. So think about 18 divided by 2, which is uh, 9. Put the 0 back. You are at uh, 90 degrees. All right, champions? You guys are so good. Uh, let me see if I could give you a stamp because you guys are so good. Oh, here we go. Good job for that one. All right. Awesome. Okay. Here we go. Where in the whole world are we going to use this? Well, here's one of the many uh, real-life applications of the unit circle. Uh, you probably eat it, not really realizing, but the guy who cuts the pizza needs to know exactly what's doing, what he's doing, what she's doing um or the gal um because they have um they have i think a, there's a cutter and there is a s slicer i believe a slicer within a frame and depends if you want a 24 uh, uh 24 slices even eight slices you want six slices and this uh frame that cuts actually depends on uh, the degrees in the unit circle so can you think of another example that you've seen the unit circle in Chime in in the chat, please. Take another example for that. Chime in in the chat. The wheels, that's very true. The wheels, yes, yeah, true. The wheels are true. Okay, here's the objective. You will be able to use angles, that is degrees and radians, and special right triangles trigonometric ratios to complete the unit circle. I guess there must be a hyphen here. Right angle triangles, right angle trigonometric ratios. Maybe there's a dash here that relates both of them. All right. And uh, I'm gonna start with a very uh, simple one. So we're gonna go here and have fun and at the same time i really wanted you to think about uh what we have covered uh, i guess we are probably one of the few who actually gone through the unit circle before all this uh, shutdown happened to schools and stuff so i guess uh, it's a blessing um first of all i wanted to uh talk about a few things the first one is gonna be um uh, what we've done last time, which is briefly here saying, this is the Cartesian coordinates here, uh, x's and y's, and I have positive x, negative x, positive y, negative y. And we said you could pick any points in these quadrants. We label the quadrants 1 and 2. These go counterclockwise. So we're going to move like this. We're going to rotate like that, okay? 
And we said the easiest uh, thing, uh, uh, the easiest way to think about this one is you picking up a point. So I pick a point, for example, in the first quadrant. And last time, I think, Cloud, quite a few uh, like 3D 1, comma 1, which was is perfect. So this is positive 1, positive 1. Uh, we said this is uh, the X, uh, this is the X, and this is the Y. And then somebody picked another point. And let's see uh, this one. I need to change the color here. Um, so let's say I wanted, uh, it's negative 2, comma 1. That would work. So nothing wrong with that. And um, let's say this one, in this case, is going to be negative and uh, positive. So x is negative and the y is positive. And let's say I'm down here and I wanted, uh, let's say, negative 3, comma 2, comma negative 2, that is. So negative x, negative y. And finally, I'm here and I just pick a point. Let's say um, uh, 4 and 1. Okay, 4, negative 1, that is. So this is x positive negative y we also um, added uh, another layer of this one uh, which is the trig functions the sine and cosine uh, this is cosine so let's label things uh, this is cosine this is sine uh, cosine sine cosine sine and cosine sine every x so at the top here, every x equals cosine, every y equals sine. And if you really want a tangent, so it's y over x, that's going to give you the tangent. Okay, so we talked about this one last time in details. I just, just a refresher uh, and to know which is positive, which is one is negative. And if you happen to forget, there's always this in front of you. Just pick a point. Pick a point in that quadrant, and that should lead you there. We also said there is a mnemonic for this, which is all students take calculus. So that's another mnemonic for you to, uh, just in case if you've forgotten, to uh, uh, take uh, pick a number or something. This is a mnemonic for you to uh, remember uh, that in the first quadrant, positive is belongs to all of them. All of them are positive. So the sine and cosine, the sine is positive, cosine is positive, sine is positive, and also tangent is positive. Here only sine is positive, meaning there is a negative cosine, there is a positive sine, and negative tangent. Down here, uh, there's a negative cosine, negative sine, and the tangent is positive. Down here, a positive cosine, negative sine, and negative tangent. All right, so keep that in mind as you remember things here. This is the only thing that's positive. And here, the only thing that is positive is the sign. And the only thing that is positive is actually all of them here. That's not, all of them are positive here, the first one. Okay, so this is a foundation. Make sure that you really get that. Okay, another thing that we talked about also was uh, the fact that the unit circle itself uh, also has another layer. And that layer is <clears throat> is um, the fractions. So fractions. Uh, who really likes fractions? Uh, well, may, may, maybe you are, you are a fraction freak, but let's just review some fractions here, okay? So if I have one-fourth plus one-fourth plus another one-fourth, well, how much is that? Well, luckily we have a same. We have a common denominator here. We have this four, this four, and this four. That's common. So what I have to do now is just add the top, because you have a common denominator. So one plus one plus one is three. So a quarter plus a quarter plus a quarter is three quarters. Okay. Now let's do another one. Let's say I have a five over six plus two over six. Interesting. Uh, let, I'm sorry, let's have 1 over 6. 5 over 6, 5 sixes, <clears throat> plus 1 6 is going to be 6 sixes, which is 1. Okay? That's fine. So keep this in mind as we also discuss this a little bit further. Another thing that I wanted you to know, don't forget the all student take calculus here, okay? All student take calculus. 
Another thing I wanted you to another another thing I wanted you to remember is uh, is I'm going to start a new uh, page here is the actual uh, breaking down of the <clears throat> the pi. So I have here bleep, a line. <clears throat> And at the top of it here, I have myself, uh, hello, I have myself, ooh, I love that. A half a circle. Half a circle to us, you start from zero, and then you end up with 180. Why is that? Because 180 is pi, pi. And if you guys remember last time, we said you could rotate, you could finish the whole circle in two pi's because of the radius is one if you guys remember and the circumference is two pi r two pi times one is two pi so you finish the whole circle in two pies meaning if the whole circle is two pies that means this is 360 and 360 is the same as two pi so half of that is just the pi so we're going to focus on the pi today the pi <clears throat> slice the pi so uh, first slice of the pie, I'm just going to take it and slice it exactly in half. Just like that. Which means I have half of the pie here and a second half of the pie here. Half plus half, right? Half plus half. So that's one way for you to know. Now, if you take the 180 and slice exactly that in half, you're going to get 90 degrees, right? But what would you do when you divide the pi in half? Well, you divide the pi in half, you divide it by 2. So that becomes your pi over 2. Your pi over <clears throat> your pi, which is the 180, you're going to slice that in 2. So it becomes pi over 2, meaning uh, one angle is 90, same angle is Two pi over two, which is angle and radius. So this is half of the pi. This is the second half of the pi. And if you put two over two, it's going to give you one. And that's why when you land here, when you land here after you finish the second part, you exactly going to be on top of the one eighty. Okay. Uh, so let's do another one. And this one we're going to do. <clears throat> we're going to take the pi. <clears throat> And that we're gonna slice this pie into my awkward uh, half <laughs> circle here. Uh, we're gonna slide this pie now into uh, three parts. Okay, so three parts for this pie. So I'll take the, I'm trying to approximate here. This is one part. That's one part. Okay, and back to labeling things. Uh, this is zero, and I have one eighty. Uh, also, 180, we said this is going to be the pi. So now think with me. Now do you have one-third of the pi? And then two-thirds of the pi, right? One-third, two-thirds, three-thirds of the pi. <clears throat> so if you want to take the 180, divide that into three, right? 180 divided by three is going to be 60. That's 60. Uh, maybe consistent here. <clears throat> this is 60. Uh, and 60 plus 60 is 120. And you add 60 to that is 180. So one third of the pi is 60 degrees. Now, what is 60 degrees in terms of pi radius? I just said it. One third of the pi. One third of the pi, right? One third of the pi. Two thirds of the pi. Three thirds of the pi. Okay. So I could go back to, one, to 60 and say this is also equivalent to or the same as pi over 3. That's a 60. How about this guy? Well, 120 is two-thirds of the pi. Okay, so 120 is two-thirds of the pi. Two-thirds of the pi, or two pi over three. How about this guy? Well, this is three-thirds of the pi. Look closely at what's going to happen. Boop, boop, right? Which is going to give you the pi itself. And that's why you have pi here. Okay, uh, so we did the thirds, we did the halves, and what do you think is going to be next? Somebody uh, chime in the chat. Uh, the chat. What do you think is going to be next? What do you think? How am I going to slice this guy here? Uh, I could slice the pie. Okay, let's focus on the pie at the top. Uh, yes, I see that. 
I would probably, uh, logically, my next step is to slice the pie into four pieces. One, four pieces. Uh, oh, this is in that interest. Anyways, excuse my half a circle. This is going to be four pieces. So if I'm here in the middle, I will come, hello. If I'm in the middle here, I will slice it exactly in half. Now, what if I want to slice the half into another half? Well, okay, sure. Here's another half. Here's another half. Okay. Now, let's label things here. If the, if you're telling me this is 180, Armani, here. This is 180. This is zero. I take the 180, divide that by four. So, we did that in the warm-up, if you guys remember, 180 divided by four, which is going to be 45. So, it's 45. So, let me just put the things here to start with. Gonna put uh, this is one fourth of the pie of the pie, right? One fourth of the pie, two fourths of the pie, or two pi over four, three fourths of the pie, and then four fourths of the pie. Okay, or four pi over four. Uh, we said that uh, three, uh, three. So I'm sorry, uh, pi over 180 over uh, 4 is going to give you simply 45. So 45 degrees. Okay, so every quarter is 45 degrees. So now I go here and then put 45 degrees. <clears throat> 45 degrees. Add 45 to that, you're going to get to 90. Add 45 to that, 135. Add 45 to that, you're down to 180. So how do you count by pi radians? Remember, this guy's also... This guy's also pi. Don't forget that. That's a pi. So pi over 4, well, you just said it, pi over 4. So 45 is the same as pi over 4. It's the same. Just a different name for it. Just like Fahrenheit and Celsius, kilometers and miles. Talked about that last time. Over 2, because this is 2 over 4. Look at that. You could actually simplify that, 2 over 4 here. This 2 is 1, 4 is 2. There we go. Which is... One pi over two, pi over two. Okay, and then we are going to do this uh, third one. This is three quarters of the pi. That's exactly what it is. That's exactly what what it is. It's three fourth of the pi. How about four fourth of the pi? Well, same thing. You just simplify that, dude. That's going to give you bleep bleep back to one pi. Okay, so forty five. We've done. Uh, we've done the uh, halves, we've done the thirds, we've done the quarters, and then last but not least, what do you guys think I'm going to do? Slice it into how many sections? <laughs> how many slices? Oh, impress me. Come on, you guys. How many slices do you think I'm going to do? How many slices? Yep. Oh, that's a lot. <laughs> okay. So uh, I'm going to go. Oh, that's too. Th I'm going to take this guy actually and slice it into six pieces. I've done two pieces. I've done um, uh, three pieces. I've done four pieces. I've done six pieces. Obviously, there's a reason I'm doing. Uh, I mean, there must be a reason. Come on. Come on. So if it's six pieces, now each piece has its three. Each half has three. So this is um, over here, maybe one. And here is another one. And here is another one. And another one. Ooh, I love that. Okay. We still did not change our minds. This is 180. I haven't changed. That doesn't change. That's 180. And this is zero. So now the thought is, you got 180, and you got six slices. Okay. So this is, uh, and this is the pie. Remember, this is the whole, the whole thing is pie. Don't forget that. This, the whole thing is pie. That didn't change. So now I'm going to take the pie and divide it in six pieces. Okay. So it's, this is one six of the pie. Two sixes of the pie. Three sixes of the pie. Three pi over six. Four sixes of the pie. Five sixes of the pie. 
six six of the pi. Interesting. Okay. So now if I want to put that in, in the degrees, this is 180. The whole pi is 180. Divide that into six. So basically I'm taking 180, divide that into six. Look at your uh, review of the warm-up. You would see that you're talking about 30 degrees here. Okay, so each of these slices is 30. Okay, it's 30 degrees. Another 30 is 60 degrees. Another 30 is 90 degrees. Another 30 is 120. Is 150. Add 30 to that gives you 180. Okay, now do these have different names? Yes, we talked about that also. Remember, these have two names the degrees and the pi radians. So, what is uh, this piece in uh, what is this piece here in pi radians? Well, you have it down here, it's one sixth of the pi. It is one sixth of the pi. So, it's pi. Change the color here a little bit so you could see it. <coughs> Uh, pi over 6. Yeah. How about this guy here? This is 2 over 6. Okay, chop, chop. 2 over 6. That's 1. That's 3. So it's pi over 3. So 3 over 6 is pi over 3. Uh, I'm sorry, 2 pi over 6 is pi over 3. Which is a 60. Uh, how about this guy? Two, 3 over 6 the pi. Well, 3 and 6 go together, right? To the... Um, Six goes into three twice, so it's one half of the pi. That's why you have here a pi over two. How about 120? Well, you have it here. You just play with a fraction. Four, and that's going to be two-thirds. Reduce that. It's going to give you two-thirds of the pi. How about this guy here? Mm, I can't change that. I can't simplify five, five, and six. Sure, just leave it the way it is. Five. Let me change color so you can see it. Five. Five. Five sixes of the pi. Five sixes of the pi. How about six six? Well, divide six by six, you're going to get one pi. And that's exactly what you got there. So five sixes of the pi. Uh, so it's to be consistent with colors here. Five pi over six. All right. Okay. Wow. That is awesome. Um, let's do the whole thing now together. With one, uh, actually, one thing that I just wanted to remind you of, 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 uh, and that is to remember your 60, uh, uh, 30, 60, 90, and 45, 45 uh, triangles. Okay, so I'm going to go here and uh, choose, ooze, ooze, choose, ooze, a unit circle. Okay, so I'm going to choose, ooze, a unit circle. Ooh, I love that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, and I'm gonna slice that. Shamesh the like, smash, smash the like button. Oh come on, Armani, that's loaded. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll start from here. Then. Okay, we go. Oh yeah, yeah, Armani, Armani, Armani. Okay, I'll start from here. Here we go. And then I have uh, I have this guy here, which I think I'm in the middle. I'm somewhere here. Okay, anyways. I'm not going to neglect the important fact that I have to use ooze, uh, the uh, 3060 triangle. Sorry. Which is actually a good thing. So I'm going to do something like that here. That's 45-45. I'm also going to do something like like this here this is just for me trying to remember because i now only have to copy and paste this into my unit circle this is 45 i know this is one because of the unit circle square root of two over two square root of two over two how did we come up with these ratio <clears throat> please consult the last two lectures i have one here and in the 30 60 by the way i don't have to but here it is 45 this is 30 <clears throat> 60 over here. If this is going to be the half, and it's going to be a square of 3 over 2. Any doubt about these two triangles, please consult last uh, lectures for the special right triangles, okay? So, um, basically, we are just going to uh, copy and paste. So, first thing I'm going to copy is this do it here. I'm going to put it here. Okay? That's all. I'm just going to do that. So, I have a triangle. 
which lives here. Uh, let me actually graph that for you. I'll draw that, I should say. And <clears throat> let's say we're gonna start like this. Oops, not like that, come on. Uh, bear with me a little bit here. So we're gonna do something like this, okay? So this is actually 3060. <clears throat> this is 30 and it's 60. So look closely at um, the ratios here. Uh, we said sine and cosine and tangent. <clears throat> if you want to refresh your uh, memory, sine, 30. And N here. And cosine, 30. Uh, tangent, 30. Also look at your last lectures. You should have these already written up. Or you actually could look at the triangle itself. Sine means opposite. Opposite of me is half divided by hypotenuse, which is 1. That's why I have half 1. <clears throat> cosine is going to be because 3 over 2. Tangent is going to be, oh, Lord, have mercy, uh, tangent 30. Can somebody write down in the chat what is tangent? <clears throat> tangent 30, please. Tangent 30. Tangent 30 in the chat. And opposite of adjacent, opposite of me is 1 half, divided by adjacent is square 3 over 2, and how much would that be? Got uh, 1 half. Divided by square root 3 over 2 means 1 half times 2 over square 3 means 3 over 3. Yes, thank you. I got that. So square root 3 over 3. Oh, I probably don't need it here, but I'm just saying. So if, if for you to come at this point here, how high did you go? Well, this is the same height. This is the same Y, or this is the same height here. See that? How high I, I went? That's the one half. And how far did you go on the X axis? Well, this is your this side. X is going to be exactly this side here. Square 3 over 2. That's it's going to be that one. That's why the cosine here is square 3 over 2. And the sine is going to be comma... Uh, let me erase this here. It's going to be the one half for the 30, okay? All right, champions. Now we're going to do the same thing for the 45. So I'm going to copy and paste the 45. And when I get to the 45, I'm not going to do the triangle, but you actually could do that for yourself. So I'm going to be halfway here. And I'm going to put the sine and cosine for 45. And apparently I have square root of 2 over 2. Square root of 2 over 2. Again, if you're not sure, please consult the last lecture. Uh, last one I'm going to put is the 60. And we said something in class, guys. Remember, the 60, the 60, you just flip, you flip the 30. So 30 uh, cosine and sine, you just flip them. And that's going to give you the 60. And the 60 for us is going to be over here, which is cosine is 1 half, comma square 3 over 2. Okay, uh, I know I've got a few minutes. I'm running over just a little bit, so let me finish this one. I don't want to come back to this one again. Uh, we said in the unit circle, you don't have to repeat your work. Please don't. Please don't. But uh, consider consider the um, reflection. For example, this, the, this guy here is reflected on this side because of the reference angle concept. So if you have a if you have 30 here, if you have 30 here, uh, you could just reflect the 30. Reflect the coordinates uh, in here is take the 30, take the 30, and put it on this side, the coordinates of the 30. So I'm gonna have uh, square three over two and one half. With one little exception, where are you in the inner circle? Are you in the first, second, or third, or fourth quadrant? Turns out to me I'm in the second quadrant. Well, all student take calculus, right? So only the sign is positive. Only the sign is positive. Meaning this guy is positive, but this has to be negative. So I just have to adjust that, just this guy here. This has to be a negative. I'm not sure if we can see the color, but this has to be negative. But everything is fine. Everything else is exactly the same. Now let's do the, let's do the 45. Um, here 45 is going to be again the same ratio with one little exception. Okay, same ratio, square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2, 
And the exception again is the sign. Where are, where are you? Are you positive or are you negative? Well, because I'm in the second quadrant, the uh, the uh, 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 the cosine has to be negative. And obviously, you keep going with this one. Another good way also to think of this is uh, is believe it or not, uh, you could actually not just uh, not just across reflect like this. See that? You could reflect like that. See that? You could reflect like that. Uh, you could do it like this. See that? Also the 60, same thing. Uh, I also wanted to let you know that you could also reflect. You also could reflect. Um, hello. Like this. This 30 is going to be down here as well. This 30 has a reflection down here as well. Which, by the way, is the reference. What is the reference angle of 30 in the fourth quadrant? Meaning, meaning, if I have, if I have, uh, let me change the color here. If I have this here, what is this angle here? In the chat, please, in the chat. What is this angle down here? What do you think is this angle here? If it's exactly 30 from the from my uh, x-axis how much is this angle here do you think yep 330 330 so 330 would have the exact same uh, uh coordinate points as the 30 with again the exception right so it's going to be uh, let's say square three over two and one half and the only exception I have to make here, where am I at in the inner circle? Well, it turns out to be that you are in the fourth quadrant where cosine is the only thing that is positive. Okay. So that means this guy has to be negative. The sine has to be negative. And I'm done. I'm done with this. So basically, you just have to take uh, these reflections and then do the 45. And then do the... Uh, you do the 45, you do the 60, which will take you to the corresponding angles down here. Here's the 30, here's the 60 corresponding. Can, I be, can somebody tell me what's the 45 down in the fourth quadrant? What's the 45 down in the fourth quadrant? What, what angle corresponds to that? What angle would be this guy down here at 45? This dude here. I want to change that color a little bit. What is this guy here? What angle is that? 315 is correct. That is very true. Thank you. And same thing with this last one. What's 60 reference angle in the fourth quadrant? If this is 60, what would that be here? 60 down here. 300 is correct. That is true. 300 is correct. OK. Uh, that's one way to get the coordinates. Uh, the, another way is also to think of it. Um, I'm almost finishing here from wrapping things up here. But uh, another thing to think of this is um, let me start with the brand new one. Uh, another way to think of that reflection is also with something else. I mean, uh, we said, for example, if this is 30. Actually, let me hold, hold on. Let me show you uh, just a little tool here. Here is, oops, that is not what I want. Here is this dude here. Is this guy here? So let's say I am here. Uh, awkward, a little bit awkward, but it's okay. I try to think with me a little bit here. So if I am forty-five, which is here by the way, it's forty-five, and I am sixty, sixty is here, and I'm thirty. Thirty is down here. Okay, that's all I need. Thank you. So you also could reflect. And that's interesting. You're really going to like this one. Because you, you don't have to reflect just a horizontal or vertical. You also could reflect with, the, with, with an angle, meaning with the corresponding angle. So if this is, uh, go back here a little bit up here. You could try this at home, by the way. Try this at home. My tools are a bit challenging. Oh, yeah, yeah, Lord, help me. 
Okay. Here we go. Um, you also could reflect across, meaning if this is 30 here, which is, that's the case, by the way, <clears throat> you could reflect from 30 all the way down here to the 30 that corresponds to the other side. So, for example, going back to here, this is 30. This would be 30 away from the first angle, um, so away from the x-axis, which is how much? Can somebody tell me how much is 30 down here? What would this correspond to in the third quadrant? <clears throat> 210 is correct. 210 has the same co uh, coordinates as 30. Same. Doesn't change. So if the 30 here has, uh, can anybody remember here? What was that? Square of 3 over 2. You guys remember that? Square 3 over 2. And this one is 1 half. Remember that? Okay, this will have the same thing. This will have <laughs> this will have the same quadrant. This is square three over two, and this is one half with one exception. Where are you in the unit circle? One, two, three, four. All student take calculus. All student take calculus. The only thing that is positive in the third quadrant is a tangent, which means these two guys are negative. Is a negative cosine, negative sine, and you're done. You actually could reflect horizontal, vertical, or also diagonal from the angle. So uh, I'll leave uh, the rest for the imagination to finish up the unit circle. And uh, things should uh, finally look like, uh, let me see, how does it look like at the end? Uh, Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. Here we go. You should look like this. You should look like that. And uh, again, you, you, if you guys remember, uh, we just talked about that. You just take your, um, your uh, reflect one option, or you also could reflect. I'm going to choose a different color for this guy. Reflect, another option, see down here. You also could reflect another color all the way here. Got three different ways to reflect. So which, by the way, so in the first quadrant, from the first quadrant, I'm able to fill in all other three quadrants, all the other three, from the first one. You just have to know the first quadrant. Not just that. Since this is going to be the last day, hopefully we're going to go over this. Not just that. You don't have to know that much, by the way, about the other quadrants. All that you have to know is the 30 and half of the 45 because the 45 is reflected. Look at this. This guy is the same as this guy. See that? So all what you have to do is just remember one half of the 45s. And for the 60, you reflect the 30. This guy is reflected. See that? Opposite. That's all. That's what you do. For the, the whole unit circle is just based on two things. The 30, you choose either 30 or 60. Take that, reflect it to the other one. And the 45, you only take half of it because the other one is a duplicate. Obviously, you have to add the knowledge of all student take calculus. You have to know where you're at so you can adjust the positive or the negative that corresponds to the trig ratio. Okay. I believe this should wrap up the unit circle. Mm -hmm.